Welcome to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, where we explore all kinds of things, stories about quilting, tools, field trips, maybe some famous quilters stop by, and of course, a little bit of copyright thrown in just for fun. This is Elizabeth Townsend Gard, your host, and I'm a law professor at Tulane University Law School and a faculty fellow at the A.B. Friedman School of Business at Tulane. And I just want a quilt. But today we have the famous quilter and designer Krista Watson with us. She is so insane. She's been with us before, and we have an awesome conversation. So we're talking to Krista Watson. This is Elizabeth Townsend Guard, and we're having a kind of follow-up conversation on just life and things going on. You've got a lot going on. We've got a lot going on. I want to ask you some. I have some questions for you. See what you think. Um, I'm just, you know, we saw you at QuiltCon, and I really, uh, I like our time together, so I insisted that we chat, but I do have a couple of questions. You are one of my favorite people. I love your enthusiasm. I love what you're doing, and you quilt. You you can't go wrong. (laughs) Yeah, I feel the same way about you. This is awesome. I like it. It's nice. It's, you know, it's good. Um, Okay, so a couple of things. Um, First of all, you've made this big move, so why don't we just talk about, you're in your new design studio, your new studio, which has been, like, You've been on Facebook showing us the progress, and that's been just so cool and inspiring. I have to be, I, tell, I have to tell you, I've, I've reorganized because I thought, like, well, I better get more organized because yes. you're showing us how to be organized. So, um, so yeah, so tell me, how, it, how does the space feel? Um, it's and great. What you, hoped, was it what you hoped it would be? Like, I think designing a space also would be stressful because what if it wasn't, like, you get done and you're like, so yeah, well, first of all, so what I'll tell you, so yeah, so we just moved, and um, the move happened kind of unexpectedly. It was a good thing, but it really was one of those things. Um, first of all, I have to say, I'm kind of a believer in, I'm very planned, I'm very organized, but when, like, the universe talks, I listen, I guess, kind mm-hmm. of say. So when thing, when opportunities happen, if the, the way I judge whether or not I want to do an opportunity is how easy is it? And I know that sounds kind of like a cop-out, but in other words, are there obstacles in my way? Am I getting pushed right. or is it smooth sailing? Right. And so what happened with the house is um, back in November, at, around Thanksgiving time, my husband and I realized we needed to expand our business. Um, we needed more space, you know, because we both work full-time from home. Right. And so we started thinking about, well, do we, do we rent out an office? Do we rent out a warehouse? Do we get right. a house? And right. so we, we just started the discussion phase in November. But once you put that out into the universe, things quickly happen. And so that went from November talking about it to December looking at houses to January 3rd closing on our house. I mean, it happened that fast. And I just look at it as it was meant to be. Um, It was much more cost effective to just get a bigger house. We're both homebodies. So we both have our own offices and our, our older son is actually working for us now. And so we're just, we like to work at home. You know, people like, they like to have a separate studio space. They right. like to have separate, but I, I love being at home. I'm a homebody and I love it. And so, so it just all happened very quickly. It was the right place. It was the right time. It was the right circumstance. And the, the bummer part about it is most okay. people when they get ready to move. They'll take like six months to de junk and the plan. We literally had three weeks and we were like, okay, I guess we're moving. Right. So, so now leading into one of the reasons that I'm sharing so much of my journey in moving on Instagram, on Facebook, on social media, honestly, because it makes me do it. You know, yeah. that's one of the reasons I quilt and one of the reasons I design and sell my patterns, because if I have to release a pattern, I have to make a quilt. If I have to blog on social media right. about my new sewing room, right. I better get a new, you know, cabinets and I better put up a design wall. And yeah, so it's really great. Because we're going to, I think... Uh, one of the things that we're doing this summer is um, we have a long arm and we now have the computerized part of the long arm. And so the goal is to, to really learn it um, and to uh, document that learning process. And then how quickly, once I learn it, how quickly can, can you take somebody into the space and get them up and running in five minutes? Like, is there a way to get, get like, like collapse that learning time so you could have people that are not quilters, um, other kinds of artists come in and use this, the, the material. So I am going to take, I'm going to take your lead and not be afraid to just like throw myself in there in terms of, cause I have been a bit shy about that, but I think you're right. It does make you do it. If you know you yeah. have to post it, you are like, well, we probably, we probably should get this organized. Exactly. 
I mean, the whole reason I, I might have talked about this the last time, or I know I've talked about this in other interviews. One of the whole reasons I became a quilt instructor is because someone asked me. And so I said, yes. And I was like, well, I better learn how to be a better quilter so that I can teach it. And yeah. so most of the stuff I do in life is kind of like for some other reason. I have a deadline. Someone's expecting something of me. And that motivates me and keeps me moving. Because if I didn't have those like external things happening, yeah. I would just sit on my duff and probably not get anything done. <laughs> it's very funny. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, okay. So um, what else is going on with you before I jump into all of our ridiculousness? Tell me more. You've got the, um, the weave, the, what do you, what do you call the thing? The beautiful rainbow quilt behind you. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've kind of got two quilts that I've been working on and promoting uh, recently, you know, for my new fabric, my new fabric line that's in stores right now is called abstract garden. That's so I've been two quilt alongs. One is called rainbow weave and the other one is, or no, no, no am I getting a mixed up? One's called, <laughs> yeah, one's called rainbow weave. And um, the other one is called uh, blooming wallflowers and I have patterns for both. And what I like to do is I like to create uh, quilt alongs so that people can actually make the whole quilt from start to finish. That's so because like, maybe, yeah. What's yeah. great about you is that you also do the quilting part, and that's really great. Exactly. That's what I started off in the industry was teaching machine quilting. But as I got into pattern design and now fabric design, I still, I don't want to just say, okay, buy my pattern and go figure out how to do it. Or, oh, go buy my fabric. What do you do with it? I want to really empower people to say, oh, this is one idea of what you can yeah. do. And I'm going to take you through the whole thing, not just here, make the top and go figure out how to quilt it. But I actually like people to, to go through the entire process so that they can quilt along with me and see, oh, how do I move it under the machine or how do I pick thread or those kind of things? Because right. I, just, I want people to get stuff done and not just like add to their pile of UFOs. And as a business model, having the, the quilt alongs is also good because people know your stuff is coming out and then you imagine get repeat customers and people making the same stuff, like making you get, you know, it helps on the sales side, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. And it's super fun because obviously I'm doing it to promote my patterns. Obviously, I'm doing it to promote my fabric. But I never say that you have to use my fabric. Like, you can always use other people's fabrics. And one of the most fun things for me is I love seeing my designs made up in other fabric. And I love how things play together. And I love when people mm -hmm. take it in a different direction. And that's, like, exciting for me to see, you know, how does somebody else put their, their stamp of creativity on what I've done. And I love yeah. that. I love it. That's great. Um, and so what's your summer going to look like? We're, we're, we're moving through spring. So how well, do we Yeah, summer like? is going to be um, a couple of events. Um, I'm a Bernina ambassador, so I'm going to go to their big flagship event called Bernina University, uh -huh. which is dealers in June in Florida. And uh -huh. so I get to go there and kind of hobnob with the dealers, teach them, you know, tips and tricks on how I use Bernina machine quilting so yeah. that they sell them in their shops, um, also mix and mingle with them so they'll carry my product in their shop. So it's a big marketing thing, kind of like quilt market, but very, very fo focused. So that's in June. Mm -hmm. um, July, I actually get to take a break. I'm actually not teaching in July. I'm mm -hmm. doing a couple of family vacations, which I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, probably August, September, then I kind of start up for the next round of, you know, fall quilt market. Like right now I'm in the throes of spring quilt market prep. Then I have a little bit of a break. And then after the summer, I get into fall. So, you know, the one thing I've tried to do this year is I tried to not say yes to everything that's offered. And that's hard. It's Meaning, hard. Try to give myself more downtime. Try right. not to be gone all the time. Try to be home more because I still have kids at home. <laughs> so that's, it's been the summer of, yeah, let's maybe actually go on vacation this year. I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, but then I'm also writing a book. I forgot about that. That's August, but that'll be fine. <laughs> that'll be fine, right. You got to compartmentalize, right? Yeah, exactly. Interesting. All right. So the other thing I, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about um, before we went out of time is kind of where we are in this project. Okay. And, um, and put your business hat on to see what you think about what we're doing. So what are we doing? We, um, we see a need. Um, the need that we've seen is a couple of things. We see um, there's not a lot of strong information out there on intellectual property and, um, and uh, social media issues and advertising law and kind of all the stuff that's sort of connecting you. So if you send... Um, you know, free stuff. To, every single thing I've gotten this year donated to the university. No one has sent me um, any contract or anything that tells me what I have can and can't do with the materials, which I think is really interesting. And we've or or, or equipment, and we've gotten um, a lot of donations because the, pro the project needed it, and we we continue to donate it on. But I think that's really interesting because there's FCC regulations that require you to make sure that people are doing certain things, and nobody's doing that. 
So I, I found that really interesting. So educating both the industry and helping the industry out with sort of basic stuff on giveaways and things like that. Um, but then the pattern makers and those that have like sort of startup to mid-level um, businesses. And then the hobbyists who really don't want to start a business, but they'd like to make a pattern. And right. they don't really know how to do that or how to market it. So we're thinking about this platform. We can't figure out the name, which is funny because I'm way about naming things. <laughs> it tells you that we haven't thought it through quite yet. Um, but the idea is to have a subscription service for different tiers of people. Right. I think we're um, – so that if you're just a, a, a dabbler, that we help you figure out basic stuff. If you're a pattern maker, we give you tools for statute, the you know understanding your rights and how do you register, and language for your copyright notice and uh, emergency services if you see somebody infringing and and all of that. So that's and then for the the full on business people to be able to do also a subscription so that they also get newsletters on issues that are happening so they know what's happening in the world. Um, like hashtags, should you be trademarking your hashtags and sort of oh, what, wow. you know, Never thought that before. <laughs> right? Um, yeah. So things like that. Uh, and brand and brand ambassadors, if you're going to start a brand ambassador program, what should you be thinking about? Should it be a non-exclusive? Should it be, you know, the sort of issues that might arise that you might not be thinking about so that you can have the conversations and talk to your attorney about the things that we're researching and doing here. So that's kind of the idea is these three tiers. So what do you think about that? That's, and then also a referral system that allows you to, to know about attorneys that are uh, in the field that know about that we, we know them they know you know that you you have a place to go I think I think that's a good idea I think it's needed because I think a lot of people you know just in the just want a quilt group when I kind of peruse that the Facebook group there's there's still lots of misinformation and there's still people don't know where to go and having the different levels and the different tiers will kind of allow people to get their feet wet. Yeah. On what they want to do. Um, I think the biggest thing is going to be getting the word out about it. Like you said, you're yeah. still it out, you're planning it, and you have lots of, and I'm assuming this will be a project, like you'll have the army and you'll have people at your university helping you work on this, I'm assuming. Yeah, and we'll also, um, we'll be at Quilt Market, so we're going to hopefully yeah. be there um, also, okay. and um, and then reaching out to the people that we've interviewed and sort of word of mouth and um, all that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so. Yeah. And, and maybe teaming up with some of the, the programs that are out there, like there's right. different, um, you know, craft industry groups that you could kind right. of come up with. Right. There's, um, oh, I just had a thought and I lost it, but, um, oh, like the threads of success, you know, I'm just yeah, you know, teaching one every yeah. year, but yeah, this would be like a team. Teaching. Right. So exactly. I'm teaching three classes there. So the idea would be then you could introduce exactly. other classes. Yeah. 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 So that kind of thing. But yeah, I definitely, I, I like the idea and I like in general that like when, when just want to quilt, like you throw things out there and you're very open and transparent about what you guys are working on. So then like people kind of get to go along on the journey and they yeah. get part of that of developing that. And I think that's really cool too. It's so interesting because you posted, you're the reason this started. I forgot. Oh, you're the reason yeah. this started. <laughs> they were at quilt markets. Right. Um, you had somebody, you posted something about, didn't you post, and we can cut this out if you did, but didn't you post something about somebody, there was somebody. Oh yeah, one of my, one of my quilts that I was debuting at Quilt Market, right. somebody had already taken it and had, had, you know, it was obviously a copy and they had put it up on Craftsy. Yeah. So I was, so I was, I was rooming at, I was rooming with Pam Weeks, who is the curator of the New England Quilt Museum. And yeah. so we were, we were really exhausted and your thing came in and I said to her, hey, is this original? Because she's a historian, right? Quilt historian. She goes, yeah, it's pretty original. I'm like, well, then it's pretty infringing. And we were like, whoa. Like, okay, like there should be some sort of service that allows you to get this answer this quickly that you could quickly say, you know, because there's a lot of other people that like maybe they, it wasn't, you know, it's like, oh, well, Krista's just being silly. Like this is a common design. It's been around since 1850, right? And you could easily sort of have a, an expert that, that if you had a problem, that's our referral service and our system that you could say, uh, this happened tonight. Um, I'm not sure what to do. We could say, let's, you know, for a fee, let's quickly get to Pam or someone else, have them do a quick report. Let's get you to attorney have them do a, and you can also start to do the cease and desist letters and the notice and takedowns. Um, you can, how do you approach it? You could have a DIY thing and just get it done. So that was kind of our thought is that it would speed up the process of responding to the issue. And knowing how to do it because you're right. And I think that that's going to be the crux of the matter right there. Cause I see all this all the time, you know, when, when is it a copy? I mean, you, yeah. you know, yeah. When is it a copy? If, if it's somebody's version of a log cabin block, probably yeah. not a copy, but when it's yeah. like, block that you've never seen before or something right. that, you know, 
original than it is and, and, and everything in between. And so, so that right there, just addressing that issue, you know, when is it a copy? When is it not? Is this right. And I think part of our, so part of it is um, having opportunities for people to learn about copyright in various ways because people learn differently so that they are aware themselves that they're not going to be like, well, they copied my instructions and my, my measurements and that's not fair. And it's like, well, that's not protected. Right. Right? So, right. Um, so that's the other thing. Um, the other part we're playing with, and then I want to sort of one more businessy side on this, um, is that what we want to do is start with the pattern makers um, because we they're very finite what their issues are, right? Like, right. is it copyrightable? How do you protect it? What happens if somebody messes it, it messes with you? Um, but we also want them to donate, not donate. That's wrong. We also want them to um, send us a PDF of one pattern. Um, and the idea is to do uh, PayHip allows us to put that pattern up at wholesale prices and we can also, they can make a bunch of choices, but you could do different licensing agreements. So you can say like a personal use, it's, you know, $15 uh, with, you know, an, uh, $15, $10. But if it's uh, three friends uh, and you want, you want this pattern three times, um, you could do it for $20. So you get a kind of a deal. But right. you're gonna like, but recognize it so you can norm both the pattern makers and the the general public, or at least our quilting people, into understanding sort of how this all works. If you're gonna use it for commercial use, then you can say please contact, or they could put a fee of like you know $150 if you want to do low low commercial use on right. Etsy or something like that. So that you would be able to, as part of the subscription, you'd be willing to put at least one pattern up. You could put up more if you wanted to, and you have complete control of what the wholesale prices are, and we send you a check. So if you don't make that's anything, cool. that's totally okay. But the idea is, again, to have an experimental space so we can understand metrics. If you put up three pricing, does everyone still buy the lowest price? That's the question, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, that's so that's kind of, um, and, and if it's successful, that's great. But pay hip's very easy to do, and... Um, we can keep track of it. It's got some good metrics in it. And so that's kind of the idea. And it's digital downloads. We also could do our um, our memberships through that. So that's kind of the idea. That's cool. No, I think that's awesome. I like it. Like I said, I like that you guys have big ideas and, and you work on them and you make them happen. And, you know, you just get the word out and you get buy-in. And I think that's cool. And it's just what you're doing is you're seeing a need. You're like addressing a need that's there that people didn't yeah. know how to deal with. And I think that's yeah. really cool. cool. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Go for it. All right. So on the business side, anything you should be, I should be thinking about as we approach the pattern makers or other people, how, how small should we start? I mean, if you, you guys have launched a lot of stuff. So in thinking through this next stage and anyone else listening, I mean, we're, I mean, part of it is we're transparent because I think other people want to launch ideas and businesses. Um, What else should we be thinking through at this point? I think, I think the first thing that comes to my mind, just, you know, thinking off the cuff here is you probably do. You probably, like you said, reach out to everybody that's been on the show, you know, come up. This is what I always say, you know, whether it's to like getting my husband and kids to do something or getting someone else to do something. In fact, this is going to be my, my topic on threads of success is getting people to say, yeah, that's kind of my topic. But the 30 second version of that is you make it very simple for them to do. So you, you, You brainstorm with your students and with the army what it is. Define it, IT, you know, define it, what it is. Then you come up with a a letter, you know, short and sweet email, you know, designer ABC, we want you to do X, Y, Z, one, two, three, you know, and so you're specific and detailed. You tell them what you want. You tell them when you want it and give them a deadline and then you send it out and you see what kind of response you get. But you start with the people that you know first Right. which would be like everybody that you've interviewed. And so like mm-hmm. I said, you get all this information, you send, you send out the email. I'm assuming you have everybody's emails or contacts or whatever. Right. Uh, if not, you know, that's, that's for the interns or whoever, right. so, you know, okay, let's, right. let's get an email list. And right. then you send out this email to everyone with these specifics and then you see what kind of a response you get. And then you go from there. So that would be my recommendation. That's really great. Uh, it's so insanely awesome. Um, what else? I don't know. There's just a lot going on. There's just a lot going on. There's always a lot going on. Um, yeah. But you know, where, where would we be if we didn't have, you know, you know what they say, if you want something done, you give it to a busy person, you know, True, actually, That's very good. <laughs> they know how to get things done. Okay. Yeah, right. Exactly. We do. We, we are very good at all of the time management. We're like, Oh, we have seven minutes. I, I can do a lot in seven minutes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so exactly. 
yeah, yeah, I think I think that's yeah. I just think that's really cool, and you know, okay. you, kind of, you kind of see what kind of traction you get. Okay. Then the last thing is we're making this workbook, and I want to know what your thoughts are about it. So what it is is a copyright workbook. Where each chapter helps you understand a little bit more about copyright and other intellectual property. So we did the basic one at the first chapter at PokeCon, which is good, super easy. But my question is, should we be trying to, and we, we may do it as chapters, like each chapter. We've talked about this before. I'm not sure exactly how to make it successful um, and how to think about it. Should I be thinking about talking to designers or, and people like you to be like, hey, would you work on chapter one or chapter two? So there's collaboration and sort of, you know, I can see a benefit to that, um, but I also don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like. I'm not a designer, I'm a law professor. So, you know, as we start to think about like explaining public domain, what, we have a great idea for this, but like, should we be, and should we also be using the, the celebrity power of a number of the people that we know to not just have it us doing a book, but that it's more of a collaborate, collaboration or collective work. Yeah, I think collaboration is always good because people like that. And um, the more the more hands you have on something, the more people you have involved, the more people take ownership of it. And yeah. it's like a baby, you know what I mean? And so, you know, kind of back to, yeah, just, just start with the resources that you have with the people that you're interested in, you know, yeah. um, outline it if you haven't already. You know, I'm assuming yeah. you probably have an outline of, of what you want things to be and how you yeah, want yeah. them to flow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're working start, on them. Yeah, yeah. And start assigning and delegating and, you know, and, and seeing, you know, which, which maybe kind of have a, a dream list of like, oh, this person would be mm -hmm. great to discuss this aspect or this person would be great for that. And then just kind of start, you know, breaking it down. I mean, I, I apply that to everything in life. I just, I make, if something's as big and overwhelming, I kind of just make an outline, make a wish list, and then just like, okay, this is too overwhelming, but how about if I break it down into sections and then just delegate it if you have to. That's really great. And then you can start to think about sort of different people that do different things and why that would be great for that chapter. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. So that it, 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 it is a good example of it. Awesome. I think that would be great. Well, I'm going to hit you up for that sometime <laughs> soon. Um, I have to tell you, um, okay, I see a lot of fabric. I like a lot of fabric. Um, I'm doing this really cool thing. Somebody else did an inventory quote. Do you know those? Where you take a little three inch square of every piece of fabric you have and, and you put, I'm putting it in a rainbow, but you have like literally your entire inventory in a quilt. It's so insanely awesome. Anyway, I really like your fabric. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I know. I, I, yeah. One of the things I did, it was kind of. It was kinda... all my fabric. So I, I'm like, I have to say you, um. I'm always like, I like this piece. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, it's been fun. I know I am. I'm kind of in between projects right now because I'm basically promoting the stuff that's in stores now. Uh -huh. I'm waiting for my next samples of fabric that I'm going to be sharing at Spring Market. Nice. So, so this, the move thing kind of worked at a good time where I'm not sewing anything right now. So uh -huh. I'm getting everything set up. I'm doing computer work. And then probably in the next couple of weeks, I'll start getting all my sample fabrics. So then that's where, again, I'll go under a rock and hide for a while. And I will literally just sew for like four weeks straight. So like I'm trying to get ahead. Like I did right. my design wall and I did my right. getting yeah, everything ready. Right. So yeah. And so that like I'm doing a lot of computer work right now while I'm not sewing. And then once I sew, it'll just be like, you know, listen to all the podcasts I've missed yeah, that's right. like hours and hours and hours while I go for days and days. So it's kind of, I kind of tend to batch things. Like I do a whole bunch of computer work and then a whole bunch of design work and a whole bunch of sewing work. And you know, my yeah. goal in life would be if I could just do a little bit every day, but yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. way. Life is just yeah. not that way. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, so. I just love chatting with you and catching up. Um, and, uh, we really should chat about things more. I think, um, I think it's just yeah, it's cool. It's just, just yeah. I'll see. Are you guys going to be at? Where's your next event? Like, where are you guys going to be next? I think market is our next thing that's on tap right now. We might do some stuff in the summer. We also might do a tour. We're thinking about going from Toronto to Nebraska. Oh, that would um, be fun. Yeah, because my kids going to be in Chicago, and so I want to be at, at least you know it's like eight hours each way. So like, if she had, there was some problem, right. I could get to her. Um, so we're thinking about maybe a summer, a two week summer tour of like going down that direction. Um, but I think, yeah, I think, um, I think market, we can't get to, I can't do spring market because that's during graduation. So right, right, right. I have obligations. I have to, oh, I know. every year I have to check <laughs> my kids. I'm like, can I do this event? Where's my kid? Where's my kid? <laughs> right. Yeah, Any like, graduations happening? <laughs> I know. I know. We, 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 we were lucky that last week or uh -huh. last year, cause, cause a lot of times they, they don't post the schedules until yeah. I 
time. And like we were, we did not miss last spring market. My, um, my 18 year old son graduated. And I think market was like the week before graduation. I was like, okay, thank goodness. And so my, my daughter will be two years. For, so two years from now, I have to make sure, okay, is market the same week as her graduation? If it is, then I'm not going to be there that year. Okay. So, you know. right. I know. I'm like, I wish the schools would kind of get their schedules more, like yeah. more than a year out, because my schedule is yeah. two to three years out. <laughs> That's very funny. Yes. Well, for me, graduation is a yearly thing where I have to sit on the stage. So yeah, oh, yeah that's right. Because you, yeah, yeah, exactly. So you have to, um, to be there. My obligations are to be a part of the set dressing for yes. Three now, hours. tell them to, to switch it around your, you know, schedule. Just like, the question is, can I break hand sewing? Like, is that is that reasonable? Can I can I just do some hexes while I'm on stage? I I don't know. Is that crossing a line? <laughs> I, don't know. I think I might be trying it this year. We did get Kindle books banned from graduation because people were putting Kindles in, oh their, my goodness. in their programs, the faculty. Because we right. were there, it just, it's very, you know, think about like, you know, 12, 15 graduations, same a year after year, same speeches every year. That's a lot. That's uh, a lot. But yeah, we got in trouble for Kindles. I didn't have one. I, well, I completely adore you, completely oh. and one hundred percent. I really do want to do a project with you with your fabric because I love your fabric. I just love it. Just something. Okay, yeah, let me know what you need. Yeah, I, sometime we'll, we'll just figure it out. So I just think it would. Okay, be great. sounds good. All right, sounds good. We'll just keep keep doing it. Keep on going and keep uh, on doing what you're doing. I love I love following and seeing it come together. Super fun. I appreciate it. I appreciate the support. It means a lot. It really does. And you're awesome. I love your. I love you. Get back at you. All right, take care. Bye. Now. Have a good one. Bye. So Lily. you've been listening to Just One Quilt. Right a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School. And I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gar. If you like this podcast, keep listening. Also, we have a Facebook group. Come join us. We talk about a lot of things. We also have an Instagram account. And of course, most importantly, I really hope you get a chance to quilt today.